Hey guys, how we doing? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration. This is Damian James, here to kick off the second season of this channel. And I just want to start by saying this is going to be my first shoot in a while, so I ask that everyone bear with me. And what we're going to be talking about in today's shoot is part one of my Apotheosis book review, Intro to Luciferianism by Michael W. Ford, and a little bit on some of my thoughts, my experiences on the Luciferian practice and the symbol, archetype, or entity known as Lucifer. I want to start by saying this, that I did a couple different versions of this shoot, tried to do my experiences, then the book review, and I actually found them to work much better better as one holistic shoot. So this one's going to be a little bit longer, but that's why we're going to do a podcast in today's episode. There will also be the timestamps below so, or the chapters, so you guys can revisit these in parts. The only other thing I want to say right now is a bit of a disclaimer and something that is important to me based on the core philosophies or virtues of the Luciferian practice, which is pretty much the recogn recognition and the unapologetic manifestation of your own self-sovereignty as an individual here in this world. So in other words, I just want to remind people that I'm not trying to change people's views on Lucifer or their spiritual practice, palette, or preferences, because for, for me to do that, that's actually to try, or that's actually to miss the greater point of Luciferianism, which is honoring your own personal apotheosis, your own truth, and allowing you to become your own best self, even if you see it differently than me. And I also want to say that because of that, we're not going to do all Luciferian stuff on this channel. And one of the meta points I want to make right now is that while I have my own unique experiences with the spirit archetype symbol of Lucifer, and my thoughts on the philosophy themselves, or, or the philosophy itself, yes, it's more of a philosophy than a spiritual practice, are in kind of conflict right now. In other words, or for analogy's sake, um, I used to love punk rock, the punk rock scene. Well, there's a lot that inspires me about Lucifer and the current, and it's brought about some good awareness and change in my life. Um, trying to be a better Luciferianism is like trying to be a punk rocker. If you understand that core philosophy, that kind of very quickly turns into a dog chasing its own tail. So I'm really um, sorting through this myself on the video too, and hopefully, or the podcast, and hopefully going to speak to the views or bring insights to other readers that may be feeling the same way. In synopsis there, this is going to be a little bit about, this is going to be part one of a book review. We'll talk about certain parts in more detail in another part. And we're also going to use these segments of Ford's book, Apotheosis, to share my thoughts, my critiques, my insights on various pieces of the Luciferian practice. How does that sound? So I want to start by saying this, and I don't want to give out names. A lot of people found themselves, for lack of a better word, confused by this book. They like the gist of the philosophy. They like some of the points, the 11 points of power, the traits of the maverick, which um, I think are good signposts that this current may have something in store for you. But to use a lawyer term, the burden of proof to try some of the rituals just wasn't there in their eyes or my own. They were confused about how to go about things or why to do certain rituals or when and a lot of that i think just came down to the structure of the book itself and such was ultimately the case with me now i'm not going to say that's all bad because the, I, I found myself to be very intrigued and inspired by it but very confused myself about how things were supposed to work or how to approach this in this um information so that kind of got me off my butt saying well the only way i'm gonna find this out is by trying some of this this out and see what happens and the only other thing i want to add there is that while this review is going to sound ultimately negative i can't say it's an ultimately bad book or a do not read because it got me exp experimenting with the current and working with this spirit for better and worse, hopefully better long-term. A lot of good in my life happened. We shine light on a lot of unpleasantries, things I needed to work on 
why I don't have my goals, the chasing of false desires, and the positive being that that's going to help me slowly but surely do a better job of getting back in touch with my own self, which is, I think, one thing this current will bring to the table is that a lot of people lost touch with themselves, became somebody they're not for the sake of spiritual growth which whether it's Luciferianism, Buddhism, New Age, or otherwise, that all being the same, that's like going out of your way to be a punk rocker that is conforming to rebellion or conforming to nonconformity, let's just say. But with that being said, as I just mentioned, I found the structure of this book to be a little bit off, and a lot of points were just kind of elaborated on in myriads of fashions too many, at too many points. But... I think the best place to start this book review was one of the final sections on the book, which is, who is Lucifer? Ford will talk about the origins of Lucifer, who is Yahweh, all of that good jazz. And this highlighted one of the great paradoxes of this practice, and this is not my quote here, but as another online con content creator will say, there's this undertone of Luciferianism that, as he would say, feels kind of like trying to put on the Darth Vader mask to rebel against the Star Wars universe. I also agree with him when I think that Luciferianism is a great deconditioning ex exercise for deconditioning limiting beliefs or spiritual beliefs. An example from my own life to make this a little bit more relatable was we, we're, we're, we've been doing a lot of deconditioning from new age, new age patterns and inertia, and I don't necessarily think all new age is bad, especially when you strip it of its dogma. One of the reasons we're doing this side note is eventually I want to build up to a point to argue that chaos, magic, luciferianism, and new age have more in common than most people will like to admit. But it makes more sense to cover luciferianism first before we get there. But just once again, an example could be um, Lucifer and I have been working with things like, is this belief or this approach to magic your own, or is this something an influence said, a mentor or another source, and this is you trying to be their idea of a chaos magician, their idea of a spiritual practitioner, so on and so forth. While I'm still into the practice, one revelation that came um, about a year ago I haven't shared was this inspired me to announce to local circles that I fucking quit spirituality. Yes, I still meditate. Yes, I'm still into this stuff. But for me, all these terms, right-hand path, left-hand path, high-low consciousness, spirituality, they're getting in the fucking way. They're holding us back as a species of society. And I think spirituality, like punk, is fucking dead in the water. It's a bunch of fucking hippie-ass posers, but... You know, Luciferianism for me in a positive sense got me saying, you know what, I want to meet my own needs. I want to touch base with people that resonate with me. I'm not here to change people's minds, but I don't give a shit about the Great Awakening. Um, while I do have, you know, experience of belief on spirits, I do consider myself an atheist in a slightly different sense of the word. I really don't care what happened a million years ago, the way I see it. All these traditions died at some point in time anyway, so I'm not saying they don't have their virtues, but to take any of this as absolution is a fool's errand. So th those were some of the goods and the deconditionings that happened when I naturally started experimenting with the Luciferian current. Now, beyond that, um, I want to get back on top or back on track here with who is Lucifer. Well, some of his associations are the light bearer. There can be some misnomer here because there's some people that say, oh, Lucifer is not what, you know, the Christians say at all. He is this super caring light love spirit. For me, I did not find that to be true. I found that to be too divorced from the mythos, the symbology, or the association. To understand this, let's can't, let's um, ask, what does it mean to bear light on, or what does he bear light on? Well, some of this was already discussed. He will bear light on why you don't have your goals, magically or socially or otherwise. For example, if somebody wants a soulmate, or a relationship even, he may shine light on something like, did the fact that maybe... Melissa Manifestation learned all this spiritual stuff to get a relationship suggest why she is single? In other words, is this a manifestation of in her insecurities? Is writing a million gratitude statements um, all the time maybe taking away from time she could be do so doing something more direct? 
or as they would call it, the path of following the path of least resistance, such as working on her social skills, putting herself out in the world, is she may be already too socially aloof and into out there subjects and talking to regular people about chakras, only perpetuating that problem. These are the things he may shine light on. He may also continue with the, with this analogy, shine light on something like, maybe Melissa Manifestation doesn't care about a soulmate. Maybe she just wants to get laid. Maybe she needs a bounce back. Maybe she needs to stop fucking overcompensating with stupid statements like the highest good of all parties involved because she wants to date John and John's in a relationship with Sally. So clearly she doesn't care about the highest part the highest good of all parties involved. I know that sounds pessimistic and negative, but for me, shining light on those things and being able to accept those things is very liberating. Um, coming back to my own story here, some of the things are, yes, I care about magic and all these things and experimentation for my own personal sake, but right now, whether I like it or not, um, I need to be focusing on getting my mundane, social, and immediate needs met before I can progress much further. That's something I'll shine light on. But then I can at least get behind that with more vigor and more inspiration instead of avoiding it. We, I think we already spoke about this a little bit um, with some of the previous examples with quote-unquote Melissa Manifestation, but he will also shine light on ways you create your own hell. Uh, but a prime example, ironically, was how I was, you know, creating my own hell by trying to adapt to their style of Luciferianism instead of figuring out what that what that meant to me. And I think I'm pretty good with you know, honoring my own truth, but we lose sight of that. These are all ways we're going to suffer, ways we're going to create our own hell. One for the audience could be watching too much YouTube. You spend too much time watching YouTube. Um, you're probably not getting out in the world doing your stuff, ironically. It, as maybe Eastern traditions will say, he'll show you all the ways your ego will trick you or misunderstand information even if it's from even if it's from an honest place now with that being said lucifer also has associations of the shining rebel or the adversary um i think beyond being a rebel without a cause really what this be what this really comes down to and this ties back to the deconditioning thing is being a adversary first off against your own limitations or your own shackles while i'm not saying lucifer is or isn't the devil i think a good metaphor can be found in the symbology of the waitsmith devil card right those people are chained to the altar but those chains can be taken off any time first you need to liberate yourself from your own shackles rebel against your old self your old limitations now, if you're going to do that using some of the examples, yes, you will naturally seem adversarial. If that means standing up for yourself at work, saying something that needs to be said because there's bullshit at the workplace, calling your friends on their, their bullshit, even if you're trying to be a bigger person, yes, you will come off as adversarial. And yes, a lot of them will turn their backs on you. They will not see it that way. I think that's where the mythos of Lucifer Paradise Lost comes into play here you will essentially be cast out in their eyes and it will feel unpleasant going through this transition um becoming your own self but you know it, once again i'll show you these people were not your friends i'm going to shine light on you this is why you're creating your own hell or at the very least not making progress towards your own personal paradise regardless of what it looks like in the eyes of others i think from a chaos magic perspective luciferianism is a great deconditioning exercise now, from here, let's come back to the the beginning of the book. And if I didn't mention it, Michael Ford is once again the author. Um, and he also is speaking to this from the Church of the Assembly of Light Bearers. I personally have no interest in that shit. To join a coven, it just seemed to miss the point of Luciferianism in my eyes. If you feel differently, connecting to like-minded individuals can bring you power. In spirit of Luciferianism, ironically, go for it by all means. And I honestly fucking mean that. But from here, he's going to go into start the book by basically saying what is left-hand path and how it differs from other left-hand path traditions and how left-hand path varies from light right-hand path. And these are some of my gripes, not so much with Ford, but the practice. I want to start by saying this. Um, for me, in my eyes, there is very little in the occult or modern metaphysical communities that are true 
left-hand path for a couple different reasons. And to keep this concise, what I'm going to say is, first off, as a lot of content creators are saying, what left-hand path meant when the term was, um, in, during the term's inception, and how it's used now are two are essentially two different things. And by modern standards, I would say that there's really not much in the occult communities that is true left-hand path, which seems to be rebelling against all things. Most occultism just conforms to its own branch of occultism. Once again, um, wearing the outfit to be, be the punk rocker, isn't that missing the point? Isn't that an ego trap? Is, is what I'm essentially saying to me. Um, if you want to understand left-hand path, Frederick Nietzsche is a better example, and I think Frederick Nietzsche ties in beautifully with Luciferian philosophy and or chaos magic philosophy. I do want to do a shoot on that at some point um, this season, but those are pre those guys are the real, or in my eyes at least, real left-hand path. I'm going to say is they don't they wouldn't give a shit about luciferianism or the occult or probably magic whether they're magician or not consciously or unconsciously you know from a transgression of all social standards point a modern mythological or fictional archetype a better example would be tyler durden he's very comparable to lucifer um or from a place of transgression or pure hedonism i would say sid vicious is about as fucking left-hand path as you can get ladies and gentlemen so Perhaps for me, without bragging, I was always inspired by movies like by Fight Club at a quote-unquote spiritual level. Um, these things made me want to throw out all consumerism, probably too young in my age. Um, really got into the Sid Vicious transgress, try and die by the time you're 25 style of life, which is why I need to fix certain things in my life now. And I used to be inspired by Nietzsche. So for me, I found this to be very, very common sense. But if you're not exposed to those things... I guess this can be helpful for you. Now from here, this is something I really did like about the book, which are the traits of the Luciferian, and some ideas are being a maverick, a free-thinking individual, someone that does not take things, take things at face value. We will do its own video on the traits of the maverick and list them go through them. Um, one critique I had is that a lot of them were redundancies or reiterations of previous traits, but these are free-thinking individuals, people that are naturally rebellious, people that trust, that, that pretty much develop their own personal truths by their own personal experiences. An example could be a Luciferian is not going to say, oh, the law of attraction is true because quantum physics says so, because some neo-shaman said, they'll ask, and how much quantum physics have you done? Where did you study? They may ask questions like that. Or they may ask questions, does it really matter if quantum physics proves it or not? One for me is, does it matter if it's a placebo or not? What matters for me is the growth, the movement, the personal empowerment. So the traits I really did like um, because the traits are great signposts that, that this is current may be with you or resonate with you. The one thing I found is that when you look at these traits, you're you're pretty much going to notice, I already am doing this thing, as a lot of viewers have said on my channel, um, a lot of them felt they were doing magic or manifestation from a chaos magic perspective, state of mind, or point of view before they knew what it was. I think there's a lot in a lot in sync there. You kind of are a quote-unquote KO or Luciferian, while well, I'm trying to get away from those labels too, um, or you're not. You're going to get it or you're not. My critique there, once again, is that if you really get these traits, you may find that to go out of your way to get better at these traits or be a Luciferian may be, a, at least seemingly, a step or two back in the wrong direction, but that can lead to powerful conclusions. You know, while I found that to be the case, some of the Luciferian work certainly opened doors for me to connect to other free-thinking magician, some of which I've had on this channel new revelations about my practice, who I am once again, and I'm not saying this to impress you, I'm saying this to impress upon you that despite the fact I'm critical of this, it's not all bad. If anything, I think some of the things Ford was dealing with are more logical fallacies or flaws in this philosophy or current itself. In other words, putting it bluntly, it's kind of an alternate fucking religion instead of a self-sovereign explorative practice, but ultimately that's for you to decide how to go about it and what you want to make of it. Now from here, he goes into the infamous 11 points of power, which we will also do a shoot on. 
while I'm still exploring this, these pretty much seem to be a re reiteration of the Levian satanic points or satanic rites, whatever the exact term is eluding me off the top of my head, but it just seemed to be a reboot of those. Nothing really new, and the, the, the points of power and traits are kind of more the same thing. Once again, the traits are, you're kind of already doing these things, so you get a trait about being a free-thinking um, individual, being a maverick is a trait. A Luciferian point of power could be, well, if you want to be a maverick, think for yourself. It's like saying, if nothing is true and everything is permitted, why did you make a principle about avoiding dogma that's kind of fucking self-evident if you get the core philosophy? It's very, yeah, duh. But those are there for people that may be looking for key points to adopt if they want to even bring aspects of this philosophy into their practice. And one thing I do like about this book from Michael W. Ford is he does speak to this, and I found this to be powerful, that because this is a philosophy, and he, he, he does kind of state that, that you don't really need to work with Lucifer to be a Luciferian. These points can manifest in a rebellious New Ager, but doesn't get on the whole vegan 24-7 bandwagon religion and doesn't like running around with fucking blue balls. And if that's your jam, that's your jam. I mean it. But, you know, Luciferianism is kind of more of an energetic current that can manifest in a new age circle, can manifest in a chaos magic circle. The chaos magician that is always hitting heads with chaos magic, these are kind of what those 11 points of power are getting at. From here, he gets into Luciferian philosophy. Um, it's pretty much just a reboot of Satanism with some contextual changes, it seems. Luciferianism is more agnostic. It basically suggests to live for this world, because ultimately we do not know, we cannot be sure, but we're not dismissing the idea of entities or an afterlife. It deals with ideas. We're not saying for sure Lucifer necessarily is a spirit or a singular entity. He could be a symbol. He could be an archetype, or it even entertains the idea that a lot of magic could just be a giant psychodrama to impact the subconscious mind. One point I want to add here is that I find a lot of this information to be useful for someone who's into the chaos magic current or philosophy. Um, the point being there that um, one thing I respected is, well, I don't have an absolute opinion, the potential what if all magic including chaos magic is a psychodrama well if it works it gives you the empowerment the liberation you need i think that's pretty fucking cool and isn't that really what it's about at the end of the day i would say one core difference is while chaos magic is focused on the results aspect of magic the luciferian philosophy is more focused on the inner self and your self-development as opposed to the achievement of results from magic, the Luciferian would basically consider chaos magic lesser magic and the Luciferian work greater magic. Once again, I find these to be ultimately limiting, taken to an absolute fashion. One of my problems with the philosophy here is it does speak about balance, which I like, which is something other spiritual practices supposedly do not strive for. I ultimately do not agree, and here's why. To you know, open the gates of hell and be super dark all the time just because is not balanced either. That's like the white Jedi versus the black Jedi as opposed to being a great Jedi. <laughs> I found what was favorable for me was to maybe do 21 days of a Lucifer summoning or invocation to undo some of the fluffy bunny shit because I did that for literally years hardcore before I got into chaos magic. So I undid some of that inertia and things. But you go too far, now you're too far on the other end, and that needs to be addressed in this current. However, Luciferianism does speak a little bit more to, you know, living for this world too, but it's, I'm going to leave you to decide if they're as original as they claim to be, or that's something that's spoken about in all spiritual teachings. Certainly is the case in chaos magic in my eyes. From here, he talks about the keys to apotheosis. And we spoke about these in previous channel, uh, in a previous episode. I will include the link on um, the triad or, or triforce of manifestation. One of these are liberation, illumination, and apotheosis. The illumination, which I have not spoken about, deals with our own inner knowledge, or as magicians call it, gnosis. I'm getting fucking tired of this term. Liberating ourselves. 
um, from previous beliefs, shackles, societal standards, whatever. This was spoken a lot about in the video thus far. And then apotheosis being the final piece when we are liberating ourselves from previous routines, habits, whatever, and honoring our new personal il illumination or gnosis. These are the keys to apotheosis. At the magical level, he talks about will, desire, belief. Once again, check out that video. I found that to be a very helpful way to look at how to apply these things and a great model to figure out which one do I need to focus on or bring balance to my magical practice. I know that sounds convoluted. Just check the other video in the drop down box on the upper right hand side screen. Now, from here, he speaks about the, me the, the metaphysics of the adversary and the masks. A lot of this already came up in our Origins of Lucifer, who is light Lucifer part in the first part of this video where he spoke about what it means to be the light bearer. But what I do want to talk about here, more importantly, are the masks of the adversary. And a point I should have added already is if you want to get this book, you should just get Rites of Lucifer right away because they explain the masks of Lucifer better. But the masks basically deal with this premise that one of the problems with Lucifer is that he is not any singular entity. He has various personifications, interpretations, and or personalities just as we do. For example, um... Using a pop culture example, it would be like saying there are several masks to a character like James Bond or Batman, right? There'd be the Sean Connery mask or personification, the Daniel Craig mask or personification. No, we're not going to go on a tangent about my pet subjects today, but as anyone could see, yes, they all experience or manifest that personality or that character differently. Or in the Batman analogy, Christian Bale, Adam West... Michael Keaton, while they all do it differently, they do different parts better, they all do somehow speak to Batman nicely in some form or another. Some complement different aspects better than others, so it would be asking, which mask do I need based on my scenario, who I am, or what my practical or personal pursuit here is. And then from here, he talks about the magical practice itself. I don't want to waste any time here. Um you know, what the magical items are, the chalice, the athame, how to use the bell in ritual, why we need to meditate, the robe, the cloak, all that jazz. We hear this in every magic book, so I understand why I put it in there, but I'm going to assume this isn't your first magic book. Let us not waste time. The only thing I will say here is, is that what is important to me using a musical analogy is just as all rock songs essentially use the same chords and chord progressions, maybe turning that distortion pedal up a little bit, that effects pedal up a little bit here, so to speak, can inspire you to incorporate more of those tools in or get to a more, or apply a more ritualistic approach to your magic. That was kind of the case for me, but ultimately I found I'm not a fan of these big overdrawn rituals at all. But what I do want to talk about here now are the rituals themselves for a couple different reasons. And I apologize if this is a longer video. But number one, I think one of the big reasons we all come to magic is for the grimoire, right? It spells its techniques to grasp what they're saying beyond the concept to try this out to develop our own conclusions about who Lucifer is, what the philosophy is about, how useful it's going to be to us, so on and so forth. Don't knock it till you've tried it, right? I'm not the only magician to say this once again. I don't want to give out names, but this for me is where the book really um, just didn't really add up. And why I would say you should get the, the rights of Lucifer and why these books work well in tandem, but he gives you several different summoning circles. For Lucifer, Mask is the Adversary. This is great. It seems really cool. The problem is it was put in this fashion where it was kind of like, yeah, here's a bunch of summoning circles. I'm not really going to tell you which one correlates to what mask or what you might want to expect or what ends it strives for. Using a chaos magic analogy, it would have been like all this stuff about sigils, all this stuff about servitors, um, all this stuff about deconditioning, but didn't tell you why you were doing these tools to begin with or what ends or goals they strive towards. It would be like, okay, now I'm just making scribble scrabble and I don't know why. That's probably not going to help you get into the magic, which he emphasizes is important. Um, I think that's really what the chaos magician mean, by the way, when they say belief, I mean getting so into the work that belief isn't an occurrence anymore without going on a tangent. But um, it's really hard to engage that way 
for me when you're not being at least told why to do these things. And if you're someone that likes to rebel or make it your own, make your own variation of a ritual, if you're not telling me what your point of view is, I don't really know what to change. So I, I, I kind of felt that there to be very what the hell, how do I go about any of this? And I think one of the things I found was a lot of the uncertainty and frustration and confusion there seemed to manifest in the work itself. Now, the positives are there is a pretty nice self-initiation ritual there, which I did try out, which got me into the current and did open some doors. So I'm not saying it's all bad, but these other summoning circles, I never really did. The nice thing there would be that you could, you know, use one of these as an alternate you know, banishing ritual or summoning circle. I did find that when I tried that, there was a very distinctive kick-ass energy that came out of these that was different than the LBRP. It's very go, 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 do, 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 take no shit, take no pr prisoners energy, or at least so, such was the case for me. Personally, what I found there is if you're someone that struggles, gets too aggressive, I would do this for 21 days. That would be my personal thing. And then do an LBRP later on in the day to kind of calm down, cleanse that energy, and bring balance between between them. That's subjective, but that is my view on the matter, because one, and this is less a critique of Ford, more critique of myself, um, I said, I'm going to just stop doing all the other stuff entirely, and that was making me a little too angry, a little too dark for my own good. I've experimented mixing angels and demons in a circle that pr produce interesting effects, I think that's going to come down to what you think these things inherently are. If you think they're in complete opposition, I would not do it. If you're doing it as a symbolic act or intent of mixing light and shadow within one ritual, that seemed to work slightly differently, but mileage is going to vary there. So in conclusion, I know it seems like I was very... con. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the book, and ultimately I wasn't, but it was an important book nonetheless because it did show the door and open um, me to that world. I think a good analogy could be for the Chaos Magic audience here. Um, this book would be the equivalent to reading Libranol and Psychonaut. A book like, like Rites of Lucifer is like the Adam Black throne gallery of magic approach to Chaos Magic. Okay, here's the techno theory. At some point we want both. We want the we want to do the work to have our own firsthand experience, then have the philosophy or theory book to make sense as to maybe why things are going the way they are, or what we can expect, or what we need to improve on. And if you're not familiar with philosophy or left-hand path thinking, I think this is an okay way to start. I just found myself already without bragging, I was kind of already living life from that vantage point. So it seemed very self-evident to me, but that may not be you. Um, just another critique here. Some of the grammar and stuff is off. I can't knock that because I trip over my own fucking words too. I was not a fan of the word we use too much in the book, quote, we, because I felt like he was speaking for me before I made up my own decision or trying to speak for you. Maybe that's my own inner Luciferian talking without bragging. Um, and my only other critique is I wish he spoke about more ways people could maybe, you know, adopt the philosophy and put it into practice beyond doing those rituals, especially if you felt you, you were still keeping yourself in religious land all the time, which I can appreciate. But that concludes this. I know this was a longer podcast. I know this is a controversial shoot. Um, and I know a lot of other people have questions about where to start with Luciferianism. And there was other people that said they like this book. Um, they like the idea of it, but it just didn't add up somehow. It was missing something. And I certainly agree. Now, I have heard that Michael Ford has put out some other books that elaborate on this subject better. I have not checked this thing out and why I think it's good is it did inspire me to check out LeVay and Satanism, check out some other Luciferian reads and works that we, we, we will discuss, and really also get back in touch with my own life and building my own magical practice and be a manifestation of my own apotheosis, my own will, my own here, my own time here on earth and not somebody else's. So I guess ironically, poetically, and ultimately it did get me on that path whether I agreed with the book or not. That concludes this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a like, give it a share. 
share any conflicting views, things I may have missed out, any other cool Luciferian reads, all that good jazz. Hit the bell and subscribe notification for more content in the future if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you for being hanging in there. It's good to it's good to be back. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care again. Have a great week. Eudaimonia.